Hi, I'm Jeff Johnson. I live in Ventura, California. I'm a staff photographer for Patagonia. I've uh, been involved in a few projects. My first book was called Ben de Baja, and that was published in 2005. And my latest project, 180 South, is a coffee table book that accompanies a film that we've been working on the last couple of years. And I shoot travel, lifestyle, climbing, surfing, anything outdoors. I've been a photographer about six or eight years. And I'm going to sit down and have a conversation with Mark. Welcome to the Mark Silver Show, Advancing Your Photography, brought to you by SanDisk. We connect you with photographers who have mastered their craft, sharing their insight and showing you their photography tips so you can go right out and use them. Hey, Jeff, thanks for inviting us here for yeah. Advancing Your Photography. Yeah, anytime. So tell me about your approach to photography and the type of work you really love to do. I like to do all sorts of different types of work. I shoot travel and um, sports, climbing, surfing, and I like mo more of a photojournalistic style to things and kind of like to be a fly on the wall. And I think lifestyle and my favorite is lifestyle and portrait portraiture. I think that's probably what I like most about it, but I like just getting out there and traveling and documenting it. Telling stories. I like telling stories. I think, uh, you know, you can take a picture and it's just a picture, but I like t telling a story with a photograph or a series of photographs. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at how you do that. So how do you get a story out of whatever you're going after? Um, comes in different ways. Sometimes I'll just, you'll be hanging out with somebody and you'll realize, wow, there's a story here. And then you just try to document as well as you can. or. Um, Usually the, usually the best stories come from just hanging out. They never come from sitting around thinking about it. It's mm -hmm. Usually it just pops in your head while you're on the road somewhere. You, you might be in a place and find something that's really interesting and you want to document it or you meet somebody and you realize you got a great story. It's, it's, um, I think the best stories are never something you go out and try to find. They just kind of find you. That's what, what I've found the most interesting ones. They're usually the ones that pop up last minute, you know. Cool. And you just kind of got to be on it. Yeah. So what are some of the key things that you use every time you pick up a camera or even before you pick one up? It's kind of uh, basically what is the story? What's going on here? Is it the place? Is it the person? Is it what they're saying? You know, I'm, I'm also a writer too, so I tend to write stories also. So um, that's something I can use if I, if I don't get that photographically. Mm -hmm. I can also write about it. So. Just kind of, I think you have, a, have to have an idea of what you're trying to say with a particular subject, and you have to start with that, and then everything else will follow suit after that. But yeah, you kind of have to know that going into it, like right off the bat, what, are we, what am I trying to find here and trying to say? Well, let's talk about 180 Degrees South, which I totally love that movie. Oh, thanks, thanks. So you had a story, obviously, already in mind. Yeah, yeah, that, that, um, you know, it was in, that that whole trip was inspired by a film made in 1968. So, it was it was the spirit of the, of that journey that propelled us on our journey to to record something new, and to meet up with the the guys that were on that 1968 trip. So, that was um, that was interesting because up to that point, I'd been um, I'm a staff photographer for Patagonia, and, and I'm used to assignments and whatnot, and um, when I started shooting, before I became a photographer or a paid professional photographer, I, sh I just traveled and took photos and wrote in my journal, and, and that's how I started with photography, and I never thought it would become a profession. And then it became a profession, which is a dream come true, and then I was on this trip, and it was a real different thing for me to not have a particular assignment because I was in the film, mm -hmm. and I didn't really have a, an assignment my assignment was whatever I wanted it to be. So I just, for six months, I documented things that I thought were in interesting along the way. So there's so many characters and people and places that I just had a blast with it. And it was great not having the pressure to shoot. Sometimes I wouldn't pick up the camera for weeks. And then sometimes I would just shoot for days on end. And so it was really nice. It was kind of getting back to my roots of photography and. I started shooting film again on that trip because I'd been so entrenched in digital right before that. But I went back to film, you know, brought a digital, I mean, a film camera on that trip, and 
So it was, it was great for me going back to kind of why I started photography in the first place. Mm -hmm. Jeff, that's a rough job, but somebody's got to do it, right? It is rough, yeah. Travel for six months, and <laughs> shoot whatever comes to mind. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, yeah, I, I took a leave of absence from work, so I, um, I, I was totally free to do whatever I wanted to do. So I was, I was on, a, I think, an eight-month leave. You know, I asked Chris Burkhart, we were talking about getting a cover shot, and he, you know, kind of gave me the ingredients, and the last one was the mojo. The mojo. The mojo. <laughs> so what is it for you that's the mojo when you when you get that photograph that really pops? I think it's some kind of emotion and I think um, cuz I think Chris is is uh, he's having th he's really into like wide landscapes and stuff and having things going on with color and, and light and uh, action and stuff and I think mine um, we both he shoots other things too and I shoot different things but I think my my what I like best is people and getting some sort of emotion out of the people or um, yeah there's yeah it's hard to pinpoint that mm -hmm. thing that's happening you know but you know when you got it you know and, and it's um it's usually not when you're setting something up right. you know like I'm sure Chris has this happen you have this idea you go and you set it up and something else happens and that's your shot right and that's the mojo you know that that shot that you thought about that you set up is not the shot usually from my experience you know it's it's what you didn't plan on and if hopefully you capture that thing that you didn't plan on so it's being prepared for that being prepared like yeah. the other day i was shooting um um this guy fred becky he's uh, shooting his portrait and he's a, a climber patagonia's doing a book on him and he's just this classic guy he's late 80s and and he's just a just such a classic looking character his features and stuff and i was shooting portraits and people were talking, I was standing back and I saw him just, he was just tired, you know, he was just tired, you know, and it was late in the day and he just went like that and I clicked those shots off and they were some of my favorite because he's, he's really doing, instead of looking at the camera, he was like wiped out and he was just yeah. tired. Yeah. And he had his hands on his face and the old hands and, and I got that real quick and, and um, those are, I think those, are, that's the mojo. The, I think that's what Chris is talking about. Yeah, awesome. Those unexpected moments. Jeff, any final tips for photographers who just want to get better outdoor photographs? Shoot. Just shoot, 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 shoot. Yeah. That's the best thing you could do. And find and subjects. Finding subjects is a every outdoor photographer needs somebody to shoot. And that's the hardest thing is having somebody to shoot a lot of times. You can be a great photographer, but if you have nothing to shoot, then you don't have a photograph. Yeah. So that would be probably the most important for outdoor action stuff, I think. Cool. For sure. Hey, Jeff, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. You bet. Appreciate your time. Be sure to subscribe to our blog now to stay updated on my show. And we'll give you tips and insight to keep advancing your photography. Also, check out our guests' website for a closer look at their work. I'd like to thank Sandus for sponsoring our show. Tune in to our next episode of Advancing Your Photography for an inside look at another photographer's world. Until then, this is Mark Silver reminding you to get out and capture your own images of life. <laughs>